Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we're going to continue with part two on getting out of town. Hey, welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, it's good to have you aboard. And if you're a repeat watcher, thanks for coming back. Um, we're going to pick back up on part two of talking about getting ready in case you have to use your teardrop for a disaster. Now, what is a disaster? Well, it could be different depending on where you live. If you're near the coast, maybe you have to deal with hurricanes. If you're out in the west, maybe you're going to have to deal with forest fires. Um, if you're in a city, maybe it's some kind of civil unrest, riots, and you just need to get out of town. So the part one, we talked about putting together an emergency go bag to get you back to your teardrop or other, you know, small mobile dwelling. And this part we'll be talking about, once you're back, how can you make sure that your mobile dwelling is as ready as it can be? No, we're not talking about preparing for a zombie apocalypse or nuclear Armageddon. Um, we're just talking about the, I guess you could say the garden variety of disasters. The stuff that happens every year, but it would sure make your life a lot easier if your camper was ready to, you know, haul you somewhere else for a few days. Now I'm going to have to admit, um, when I was putting this list together of things that, you know, would be considerations, um, I'm a violator of several of these things, so I'm going to have to make some changes myself to make sure that my own camper's ready. Let me show you the first one. So you see this nice clear path around the front of my camper, that bell of straw and the uh, sway bar from my big camper. I've got a chainsaw set in there. I don't have a clear path. My wife is probably gonna beat me up for showing you that. Now it's not a horrendous mess, but those are items that are in the way of, you know, hooking the camper up quickly. So I really just need to, to get a clear path to the camper and keep that path clear at all times. So besides all the mess, my next big violation is my marine battery. If you just open the tongue box, yeah, it looks like there's a marine battery in there ready to go. But I hate to say it, that battery wasn't even in there until right before I shot this video. By the way, I've got this dent in my uh, box lid. If anybody knows how to pull that out, shoot me a clever suggestion in the comments below. So here's where my marine battery's been living for the past little bit. Um, I only have one marine battery. I've been switching it back and forth between campers. I know I shouldn't do that. I'll just have a battery for both. I've just been too cheap to spend 100 bucks or 200, whatever it is, to buy another battery. So I've been swapping them back and forth. Um, but realistically, if something happens that I need to get out of town quick or use my uh, camper, one of my campers for you know, uh, a little bit of a mobile shelter. I'm gonna hook up the teardrop, so I just need to keep the battery in there full time. So as we're going back to the teardrop, um, I told my wife about this video, and she said, you know, you really need to mention something about keeping duplicates. Um, she and I have been camping now for several years, um, probably since about 2010, and we're actually, you know, counting the teardrop. Uh, we're on our fourth camper. We still have number three. Um, but she said, you know, we're always needing something in the camper that's in the house or vice versa. So, you know, the inexpensive items, just go ahead and pick up a duplicate set. Um, here in the South, there's a Dollar General store on every corner, probably the equivalent of that, you know, anywhere you go. Um, but yeah, you know, if it's an inexpensive item, just pick up a duplicate set and keep it stocked full time in the camper so you're not having to load it right before you leave. So here's an example of some of the duplicate items we keep in our teardrop. You'll see we've got some, some trays to eat out of. We keep some bowls in here all the time. We keep a couple skillet or a skillet in a pot. Um, I've got toothpicks, salt and pepper shaker, something to start fire with, um, spatulas. I actually have a couple things to start fire with, but, and I could organize this better. And of course you, you can tell I like the color green, <laughs> but anyway, this is, all duplicate so we don't have to pack that whenever we're at, you know ready to leave so one thing to be sure of is that if you have a propane tank that it has plenty of propane 
I'm using this little small tank that I've mounted to the side. Um, and really and truly, if all you're doing is using a cook stove, it's probably not going to use a whole lot of propane, but you sure don't want to be caught without it. Certainly one of the most important things you can carry is a good supply of water. Now I've got a water tank on my camper. It's supposed to hold five gallons. Quite frankly, I don't keep water in it because I don't want the water to go stagnant or bad. Um, I've heard there's some RV products that you can use to freshen your water. I don't know about that. What I'm gonna do personally is I'm just gonna take probably a couple cases of bottled water with me. I keep that on hand in the house just about all the time anyway. I'll just throw that in the back of my tow vehicle. Now, if I had a small uh, tow vehicle and didn't have a lot of room in it to put things, I might put the, the bottled water in the teardrop, but water's pretty heavy. It's about eight pounds a gallon. I would try to put it in the bedroom um, on the bed directly over the axle. That way I'm not changing the center of gravity or the balance point on the tongue. So if you are having to get out of town, it could be that the route you want to take is blocked or not available. You may need to reroute. Well, a lot of folks are using their cell phone for navigation. Um, and that's fine as long as you're within a cell phone tower range. But mine seems like I'm never in, in a cell phone tower range. So what I do is I keep an old-fashioned Garmin GPS in my glove box. It's an old cheapie. It's not worth anything. But it doesn't matter where I'm at. As long as it's getting a satellite signal, it's rerouting me and sending me where I need to go. But what if you do have cell phone reception? Um, I'm going to highly recommend downloading an app called Allstays. Now, I'm not affiliated with Allstays by any stretch. It's a paid app, and I had to buy it myself, but I'm glad I did. It's a super good app. If you're traveling in a camper, um, it'll tell you places where you can go stay, uh, you know, for, for, for a fee, you know, like KOAs or other private campgrounds, but it'll also tell you places that you can go camp for free. Uh, it tells you where the Walmarts are. Uh, usually you can find out which ones allow camping, which ones don't. It'll tell you where the Cabela's are, Cracker Barrels, public lands, um, just about anywhere that you can get free camping. You can find it on all stays. Super Super good app. All right, so let's talk a little bit about food. I'm a big guy. You knew that was coming. Um, for me, now I'm keeping my teardrop in a garage, so it's a little bit cool, no matter you know what time of the year it is. Um, but I'm keeping canned food in there. Now, an idea of some canned food would be one of my personal favorites, turkey spam. <laughs> I know, I love it though. It's good, the good stuff. Um, another idea, you know, if you want to cook in some recipes would be, you know, like any kind of canned vegetable, canned corn, canned tomatoes, whatnot. Um, also, I recommend keeping some turkey spam. Another idea, and I love these things, for a nice quick meal, you got some protein, you got some carbs, or some beanie weenies. Now, these are chili, you can get original, all kinds of different flavors now, beanie weenies. Another item I like to carry turkey spam <laughs> how could you ever guess that one uh all right seriously though some other items would be something like peanut butter anything that's dry anything that bugs can't get into um even if your camper is clean and sealed up bugs are going to get in there from the previous camping trip or wherever so some good canned goods you know you don't have to have you know enough to you know live three months off of but maybe enough to get you by a couple of days until you can get to a, a you know a grocery store somewhere else um, but yeah that's what i'd recommend now one of my co-workers he actually doesn't have a camper but he does like to prepare for you know like a long-term power outage or whatever so he keeps a stock of mres at his house he was kind enough to bring me a few different ones to look at here Here's some examples of different kinds of MREs. So one of the cool things about using MREs is if you don't have a heat source uh, to cook your food, like my two burner uh, propane cooktop in mine, or you know a campfire if you don't want to have to build a campfire, MREs come with this little heater packet inside of them. Now, as I understand this heater packet, you just add some water in there, and there's a chemical has a has a reaction. You put this around your food and it'll warm it up. It may take 20, 30 minutes, but you can have a nice hot meal without having to carry an alternate heat source. So just the last couple items before we get out of here, 
medication. Hey, I keep my medication in their original containers. I keep them in a little tray in a medicine drawer. I can just grab the whole tray, dump it in the tow vehicle or camper and be on my way. Um, important documents. The last thing may be on your mind is grabbing, you know, insurance cards for your vehicles, for your, for your health insurance you know, licenses. You may just be thinking, hey, I need food, water, and fire, let's go. But you gotta have documents wherever you go, especially if you get hurt, you need to go to the hospital somewhere. So take those kind of things with you. Um, there are lots more resources, even some from the government. I'll try to put a couple of those links below. Those guys are professionals. They've got some really good ideas on preparing for disasters. Um, hey, before we get out of here, I wanna mention the viewer spotlight. I haven't done that in a couple, three episodes. This week is gonna be from Jeff Swain. Jeff Swain is building a little bit of a non-traditional teardrop. Um, it's actually a, a plywood, I'm going to call it a square drop trailer, but this thing is really cool. Some of the specs that Jeff gave us, it's got a 25 gallon water tank with a sink and pump. It's got two 225 amp hour six volt batteries. So there's going to be lots of power in this camper. It's got a couple thousand watt inverter, 300 watts of solar, 30 amp shore power, uh, LED lighting all the way around. There's just the list goes on. It's kind of a non traditional teardrop, but hey, this thing's going to be super cool. So, Jeff Swain, thanks for sending those photos and the information over. Um, thanks for joining me today. If this is your first time here, I was tickled to have you. If you're a repeat watcher, welcome back. Um, if you like this episode, appreciate that thumbs up and a subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel more than you know. So, till next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.